Hey guys, it's Saf here with another Rain Shadow Legends video. Now, I haven't uploaded for a couple of days because I lost internet in the house and I've realized how much we all depend on the internet these days, especially when you work from home, especially as a content creator. I was a little bit out on my legs. I did try to use some mobile data, but that did not go well. But I've got it back. It's restored. We're all back in working order. I'm here to give you an update on the permanent taunt strategy in Hydra. So I was showcasing about a week or two ago the, the concept of having Emic, Trunk Heart, and Nia, Nia reset in Emic, and Emic maintaining taunt on himself for the entirety of the duration of the Hydra fight, so you would not get consumed. Now, just before I start this video, I do want to do a bit of a shout out to another creator in the space. Uh, Bronco Games has been working actually a lot, uh, done a lot of videos on this topic before I was even aware that it was possible. Now, I'd love to have the opportunity to watch every single raid content creator's video, but I actually wasn't aware that Bronco had done quite a lot of testing. Now, he also has some automated permanent taunt teams that he's been working on. I myself, I'm always a permanent sort of, I, I prefer manual teams. I don't really prefer auto teams, which is fair enough. You know, that's, I understand why people want to do auto. I just like to do them manually. So I don't really have any uh, sort, of, sort of automatic teams. So I'll leave a link to sort of his channel in the comment below so you can go check him out. Um, and he has got all of the like different automated strategies, different testings and different things. But what I wanted to do in this video here is specifically look at the team that I was building to kind of like give you an update on the, the things that I found and how I've managed to solve them because there were some issues that we had on the previous video in terms of trying to really deal with some of the 1%, the 3%, the different issues uh, that you could potentially face when you build this team and kind of how we got around it and different things like that. I specifically wanted to build a team for Brutal around Whisper. That was kind of my goal. So having a Whisper in my team kind of presented a few issues because essentially I'm dedicating one of the six positions to be exclusively a damage dealer. She doesn't really bring any sort of decreased defense, decrease attack. She doesn't remove any buffs. She doesn't bring any sort of decreased speed, increased speed, healing. There's no utility that comes in that position with Whisper. So you're essentially building a five-man team to make Whisper work. And we were testing it on stream and kind of realizing essentially that that is actually quite difficult to do with sort of three other damage dealers, which is what I was trying to aim for as well. I was trying to fit sort of a Michinaki, a, a damage dealer, a Whisper, and then support around it and still be able to do everything to combat the, the, the Hydra mechanics. And when you're fighting Brutal Clan Boss, you can't really just ignore the mechanics. My hard Hydra Clan Boss team... I can kind of just like brute force my way because the heads die so quickly because I have more damage than the heads can cope with. It doesn't really work the same with Brutal. So you can see right now I'm just powering up some masteries in the background for one of my Shamayals in this team. I don't know if we'll get to getting his sort of uh, his Giant Slayer, which is what I'm looking for here before the end of this sort of introduction it bit. But I thought I'd just power in some masteries here whilst uh, we had it. We need to get about 350 red scrolls to finish that. But I have adjusted the team a little bit. I've made some changes to some builds. I've found a way to kind of like mitigate a lot of the issues that the team was having, and it is now running very successfully. I did a run last week and I got some significant improvements on damage. And from that run, I've now made some further changes, which kind of like hopefully will, will solve some of the issues that I was finding in that team. The only thing to really note on top of this is affinity really matters. The last team I was testing with Michinaki and he was absolutely great. This rotation, Michinaki's not so good because he's weak affinity to the Wrath Head. And the biggest risk you have with the Wrath Head is he's the only head that really can sort of one-shot your team. Um, there is a risk that you get sort of a cleanse into sort of like just lots of attacks all in one go. So you can't really da deal with like four heads attacking you. But in terms of a one-shot, it's the Wrath Head that can do it for you. And not being able to get rid of the increased attack buff on that head or not being able to put Hex on it and lots of different things... It does make it a little bit more complicated with Michinaki, and I've had to take him out of the team for this rotation. So whenever you're building your teams, you've got to keep mindful of the rotation you're facing, the affinities you're facing, because you might be sitting there going, why is my team failing this week when it had absolutely no problems last week? It's probably because the element, the affinities have changed. So you actually need to adapt. Ugo is a very significant champion that has this problem. She often will have weak affinity towards heads that you need those block buffs on or you want to control. So it's, it's something just to keep in mind as well. When you're building your Hydra teams, affinity matters. So let's talk about some of the adaptions I've made here. I did try the Duchess at a faster speed. That didn't really seem to work. The other thing is Duchess with Shamael is kind of a, a, like a null sum game. You kind of make, you're kind of like defeating the object of both by having both. You lose the Shamael sort of counterattack, 
to get all the Duchess stuff, and then do you even need the Shamael? But Duchess on her own wasn't enough to deal with the primary risk that you have here, which is how do you stop the fear head? So we kind of dropped the Duchess. I tried the Mighty Uko with the Michinaki, and three DPS, this just was so unstable, we couldn't quite get the right balance. So what we decided to, what I've decided to do now is essentially drop the Michinaki. He comes out, and we have brought in just one of these champions that you can get in the game that just gives you so much in one ability. The other one like this is Mithrala. With Mithrala, you get increased attack, increased defense, hex, poisons, cleanse, shields, strength, and you get so much in one ability. And Lydia is pretty much the same thing here because what we really need to do is make sure the Whisper has the maximum possible opportunity to do her damage. And her providing the weaken with a weak hitting Michinaki, it was just, it was finding it very difficult to get like good sustained damage. Lydia comes in and she brings her Siren's Whale, and this thing is insanely good for Hydra. It's pretty much insane for every place in the game. Decreased defense, weaken strength, and increased speed. We also have a targeted block buffs if we need it, if Uko, for whatever reason, can't land his uh, A2 because there's a buff up or something of that nature, we can target with that ability as well. And we also will always get an A1 counterattack. So I've actually built Lydia here, utilizing the Shamael to get her A1 counterattacking in a cursed set. And we also have Uko now coming in as a backup reviver because the team kind of is squishy. It needed a, a backup revive to be safe in case, you know, you had a bad rotation and you lost the Whisper and the Whisper needs to be revived or something of that nature. You did need, I, I felt I did need some sort of backup revive. I know a lot of people were talking in stream about Underpriest Brogni. He could work as well. But let me just take you through some changes to the builds that I've done. Emic is pretty much exactly the same. We're trying to get him as high protection as we can. I, I, I still haven't got any protection accessories. So nine out of nine protection would be desirable for Emic purely because we guarantee on a much better rate that protection buffs happen. And we also give everyone more damage. It's really, really nice. Um, we have changed Mighty Uko. He was built for Arena in stun set. I've now tried to index him more towards Provoke because some of the main issues you have when you have a combination of Wrath Head, when you have a combination of the Cleansing Head, the one that you need to Provoke, and you have Mischief, the, the Hydra Battle can get out of control. So if we can somehow mitigate it by bringing a Provoke set, Uko, we still get the decrease attack. And I've now moved him into War Master to try and bring some more damage when he AoEs. So what we're trying to do here is make Uko a little bit more PvE friendly, where before he was in Fearsome Presence in Stun, I probably will use him far less in Arena in this build. We've also got Triple Revenge. So again, we're trying to maximize the Provoke set and the decrease attack also, which isn't booked at the moment. I have made a change to White Dryad Nia. She was in Guardian. And I want to give a shout out to Papa who was uh, who, who dropped me a message saying, you know, thanks for the team. I, I made my own team. This is my success. And he actually gave me an idea about how to improve the efficiency of the healing output of Broad Roots. Whenever this champion is healed, heals each ally by 20%. So I went with Guardian thinking that was a good way to, you know, every single turn I'm always going to heal. But she is in War Master. So actually, in a kind of a crazy world, we're going back four years and we're picking up Lifesteal set with Immortal and we're just trying to make it so that when we War Master proc, we're going to get lots of healing. This should help mitigate maybe some of the situations where your heroes fall down a little bit on the healing front and they have to only rely on Life Drinker to get back up. So I'm not really bringing any Leech or any other sources. So this actually could become quite a powerful heal. Uh, I'm looking forward to testing that. We've got her in a very similar build again. She is just a little bit slower than Emic Trunkheart, quite good defense, decent HP, and then 399 resistance, 329 accuracy. We don't want White Dryad Nia ever to be provoked. That's why we put um, resistance on her because the Wrath Head provokes her, the uh, the head of uh, Suffering, I think it is, the whichever head that is, the tank head. If that provokes her, then obviously we lose the cycle. So we don't ever want to get provoked. That's why she has resistance, even though she may not necessarily be the mischief tank. So we've made those changes there. Whisper has evolved into a bit more of a beast. We've managed to get more ascending. That's up to speed 12. We still need to get the chest accuracy up a little bit. We also need to get this up as well at 24. There's no real benefit to me to put any more crit rate here at the moment because she's at 70%. Uh, and we could increase this to get more base attack. So she is now sitting at 7.7, .7, nearly 7.8 thousand attack, 186 speed, 299% crit damage, and about 230 accuracy. The accuracy is less important now because we have Lydia. She is in lethal, cruel with crushing rend, so she's going to ignore a substantial amount of defense. 
Then wrapping up the team here, then we have basically got a Shamael 2, as I like to call him. I've got three of them built. He is in built-in reflex. We have upped his damage a little bit more now. He is at 4.6k attack, 276% crit damage at 208 speed. No accuracy requirements. I do need to get the Giant Slayer on him for more damage. I don't really care about keeping the Torment Head alive. The point of this team is to kill heads and then do damage to the heads. So that's not really a problem. We're not really trying to maximize the Torment Head mechanic here. So we've got that there. And then finally, the new star of the show for this iteration of the team is Lydia. And you can see Lydia is in Cursed. My Cursed gear is not great. I've probably got one decent set. So you can see here, I've got like, you know, a few double rolls, you know, split rolls here. We've got like four, star, you know, five star boots. The, the gloves are okay. My Cursed gear is, is a work in progress. But she's sitting at around about... 50, 51,000 HP, 2,600 defense. She is at 100% crit rate with decent attack, but her base attack is quite low. She's not really like meant to be a primary damage dealer, just a secondary form of damage. The hex mechanic will be where all of her damage profile will come from because Whisper and Shamay are whacking heads, multiplying that damage via hex. That's where the, the main damage is going to come from. Again, she's got enough accuracy to land her A2, and she is built in sort of a mastery tree where it's just all about can we maximize the ability to place Hex. We are basically increasing Sniper. That increases the chance to place Hex by 5%. And then this has a chance to extend the duration of Hex. So we'll place Hex for two turns. We might make it for three. And what I've actually found is because of the Torment Head, she pretty much always will have um, Cursed Up on the Torment Head. Because when the Torment Head places a fear, she's going to counterattack with this passive effect. So actually you get a lot of A1s off on the Torment Head as well. The Torment Head dies quite quickly, but that's absolutely fine for this team. So I wanna just show you a quick screenshot of the, the team that I managed to achieve um, with this team. So I wanna show that screenshot first, and then I'm going to run it through, and then I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna come back at the end and we're gonna do sort of a, a close out to basically you know, think what, what, what else can we do with this team? And is there any other things that we want to talk about here in terms of potential improvements, potential alterations? Is there any other variations? So this was my team that I managed to eventually win. It is brutal difficulty. You can see I went for one and a half hours. It was a very long run, but we hit the turn limit. We did have a few issues. So the main issues with this team here, the provoke not being present at all in this team, this was before I changed Uko, basically meant we were dealing with cleanses that reduces our damage uptime. If we don't have decreased defense and weaken, we're losing Whisper extra turns. It's going to take us longer to kill heads. We're not going to get as much damage out. The other issue is if there was a combination of the sort of cleansing head alongside the wrath head with the mischief head, I did lose control. We did lose Whisper a few times. At one moment in this run, we did actually have the uh, the consumption bounce towards Emic, but we were lucky enough that we were able to revive Emic and reapply the taunt cycling as quickly as possible. But this is where I've made these changes. Because I realized those were the risk factors, we're now refining it. The fear was not a problem anymore, so that was nice to see. And we were able to go quite long into the fight with Whisper doing good damage. So what I'm looking forward to see now is can we actually improve on this 255 million in Brutal? Can we actually hit someone like 300 million? That will be the interesting test. I'm going to have to do this off this recording and jump back in afterwards. So let's start this battle then. Let me show you again how you set up this perma taunt. if you can't remember from the last video. We're going to make sure that Emic always taunts first, and then we're going to use Nia's reset, and that's all you do need for the setup. Emic taunt into Nia A2, Emic A2 into Nia A1, and then you reset that cycle over and over again. Now, we want to put the block buffs out. Probably we want to kill the head of um, Wrath first. He is quite annoying. He can do a lot of damage. There's that Uko coming out, getting some decreased attack. So here, for example, we don't have any decreased defense and weaken just yet because we had the Torment Head. So we need to wait for this ability here. There's that Cursed Lydia coming out. We basically get two Hex. That's not too bad. Like I said at the start, we're pretty much going to always have Cursed on the Head of Wrath. The Taunt goes through here. We can start pumping some damage over here. And now we're looking good. So the only thing that we have lost by bringing in Lydia is we don't have an increased attack for Shamael. So Shamael is going to do less damage, which is not necessarily the worst case in the world. But now we can start seeing the benefits here of this setup. We're going to go and blast some heads over here. And we probably want to place decreased speeds, which is nice. We're probably going to get smashed here for some damage. So we probably need to be careful in terms of this. But generally, as long as you have decreased attack and block buffs on the Head of Wrath, you won't lose too much damage. So hopefully, 
What with this setup here? We should also see some extra healing now when we do damage with Nia. That's the thing we'd actually want to check as well. How much healing are we actually putting out? Is it substantial? Obviously, we're going to get some shielding as well from the hair uh, from Emic, which is nice. There's a big hit. So there's the big nuke that I was afraid of. What we want to try and do is make sure that we mitigate the the sort of the the the, the potential for Whisper to die, because when Whisper is dead, we're essentially losing time up time for damage so again we reset here she can heal herself from life drinker what i want to see now is how much healing will nia actually produce from a war master proc and is it substantial enough to make lifesteal better is lifesteal actually worth putting on her into into increase the value of the passive of her heal so we can choose if we want to to just put a block of debuffs out on here just to make sure that if any poison cloud comes out it's not a problem you can see we pretty much got cursed out on enough people. We're going to put a bit of a shield out. And then we're going to go back over and just try and keep killing this head over here. Get rid of the Wrath Head. Nearly down. Nearly down. Hopefully we'll be killed now. Wrath Head is down. We also get a nice weaken on this straight away so we can start doing some damage. So this is going to be a bit skewed, but it should actually work quite nicely. If we slow it down... Because we're attacking a decapitated head, she should hopefully heal for quite a bit. There you go. So I actually think lifesteal is, is a, a viable strategy to try and keep your team healed without actually bringing a leech or a healer here because effectively the war master will heal her and that will heal the team. It's a very cool idea. Um, big shout out to my community for always giving me new, new ways to play the game, new ideas that I didn't even think about. So the damage is crazy with this whisper. 581,000. We don't even have decreased defense on the target right now. We don't even have increased attack up. Let's see how much damage she can do to this Wrath Head. Again, we set up this, the cycle in here. We do have Giant Slayer now on the uh, the Shamael, so this is going to help with the damage. Reset this ability. Keep pumping some damage over here. Drop some decreased attack. So here we go then. Ideally, we'd want to open with the A2, but we're just going to go open with the A3. Four, 416, so we basically got, what's that, 800,000 damage without increased attack. Increased attack, obviously, is 1.1 million. Then we have an A1 here, 832,000. It's insane, isn't it? 832,000 from an A1 ability. Get lots of healing out here. Keep smacking this for damage. Even without increased attack, Shamael does a nice amount of damage. That was 600k. So this is where the team now, the idea of these adjustments is going to come in, is to try and maximize the uptime for these when these heads are dead, essentially. We're going to get some more rotational abilities here. How much is Whisper going to do? So we can go and pick one of these heads. Doesn't really matter which. We might as well go for the Wrath Head. With an increased attack... This new crushing rend lethal build is doing 1 million. It was like, that's like nearly 1.1 million on A3. So in essence, it's matching the A2, which is a guaranteed in terms of like 100% ignore defense. So lethal crushing rend is actually producing a significant amount of damage for the A3 and the A1, and it's matching the A2, which is great. So from a burst perspective, the math that we did a couple of videos ago where we were trying to determine, is it relentless phantom touch or is it crushing rend lethal? Well, Crushing Ren Lethal will give you one a lot more burst. And even though Hydra is a long fight, you actually only have certain windows where you can actually burst like we can now. So we're actually, in essence, wanting to be more bursty and less extra turns. Because Relentless over a long fight will get more extra turns and will hopefully pay dividends. So essentially what you're doing with that, you're hoping that over a period of time it will pay off. So I'm going to let this run through now. I'm going to see how hard I can do the damage. Uh, how high we can go, and then I'll I'll probably put the results at the end of this video. So after a very, very long fight, it wasn't really two hours. I was distracted with other work responsibilities as well, so I, I kind of forgot to put it on hold for about 30 minutes. It's about an hour and a half, maximum terms. I got consumed no times this time. The only situation that happened compared to the first number of tests we were doing is the person that Shamel was boosting in this case is Whisper, was the one that was actually the only one that could die. And Whisper took the first um, sort of uh, consumption. Then it bounced to Shamel, and Shamel never died because of unkillable in the way that the tankiness. 
Life Steal Nia is very good. 7.6 million healing. Even if I got nearly like one shot, she was healing everyone right back up, which is really good. We've added about 10 million to 12 million damage from Uko, and the ability to provoke has add, meant that Whisper had more uptime, uh, which meant that we were able to do more damage. So we've gone from 255 million to 322 million, and that was just by adding a War Master Provoke Uko, Lifesteal uh, Nia, and just tweaking around some more and improving a few more builds. So I'm really pleased with this team. This team is going to go in, is going to do a crazy amount of clash points. This is on Brutal. So this is going to be a 900, is it 988 million points, which is what you kind of need. But it just does go show. This is the team for accessibility. If you want a good, quick, reliable Hydra team, you don't have to go this deep if you're not doing Hydra Clash, right? The team is interchangeable to some extent. Pretty much everything to the left of Nia can be anyone you really want it to be in any combination. Shamael can be substituted for someone like a two Hanarak if you've got her, someone who can cleanse the fear as well. But basically, Shamael is there to make sure that the fear never happens. He did 51 million damage, considering he hasn't got increased attack. It's quite impressive. I'm quite pleased with that damage as well. He hasn't got increased attack here in this particular setup, so that was adding a lot of value. Uh, you don't need to run a Whisper. You don't need to run an Uko. It doesn't need to be Lydia. The only three requirements really is Emic Nia and a fear solution. Um, and then the way that I've built near in resistance this can be your nightmare key easily this can easily do nightmare if you were to take it up to that difficulty and you will never get consumed it means you can one key nightmare you don't have to do it for hydra clash so there you go guys hydra taunt um as i said at the start of the video you know i didn't invent this concept uh it was in a raid di digest and obviously bronco has done a lot of different teams and variations he has the auto teams if you want to go check him out this is a manual team. This is like, how high can I push it? 322 million. I might be able to get a little bit more, maybe 330 million if we get more Torment heads out, if we get like more damage on our Whisper, if we can get more damage on Shamael, those types of things. But yeah, let me know what you think, guys, in the comments below. Are you now using a Perma Taunt team after seeing the results of all the different teams that all the creators are building? If you are, let me know. As always, guys, if you like enjoying this type of content with Hydra, let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. And as always, if you want to see more from this channel, I do try to diversify my content with some champion guides, team building around Hydra, Hydra Clash, Clan Boss. We do have an interesting uh, champion guides with Timmy and Kaja coming. I'm working on that at the moment. And I'll probably have a Supreme Kale guide coming soon. If you like that, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification. All those videos will go straight into your feed and you can see more of my videos. But until the next video, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you then.